What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. All I have to say is, wow, what a great season of women's lacrosse. What, what a fabulous Final Four weekend. And congrats to BC for winning the national championship. We're going to take a deep dive into the three games that occurred over Memorial Day weekend and what they mean for the future of women's lacrosse. So first game of the weekend, BC versus UNC. Um, BC had to pretty much play a near perfect game in order to be able to beat the number one seed UNC Tar Heels. And they did. Um, while they didn't dominate in the draw, they were able to make the most of their offensive opportunities. Um, Jen Medjid in particularly, it's particular on the offensive end, was key for the Eagles. She put away four goals, just played super smart, um, and really is just a really, really talented player. So she, on the offensive end, held steady. They also needed a great defensive game in order to stop UNC's potent offense, and they did. Rachel Hall had a spectacular game in cage. UNC struggled a little bit with shooting, um, but she had some seriously amazing saves. Both her and Jen Medjid were, in my opinion, the reasons why BC won. UNC fought until the very end. A really unfortunate and somewhat inexcusable inadvertent whistle with 20 to 25 seconds left while the Tar Heels had the ball could have made a big difference, but that's kind of the game of lacrosse. And sometimes, you know, refs are people too and they make mistakes. And um, while it was a big one, I don't know if it would have changed the tide completely. Um, but credit to UNC. They had an amazing year all year long. Um, very, very talented players return. Um, lose Katie Hogue, lose a good chunk of their defense, um, but return a lot of very, very talented players, including Jamie Ortega, um, for another run next year. So BC ended up moving on into the final, into the national championship that Friday. On the other side, we had Syracuse and Northwestern. That was a game that I thought Northwestern would have won. Uh, but to be quite honest, they looked like the inferior team that game. Um, Syracuse played the best team offense I have seen all year long. Their weave is so great, especially for a team that has lost two of its superstars because everyone's involved in it. Everyone has the opportunity to find their openings. They moved the ball extremely well. The Tyrell sisters played really well. Um, they put on an offensive clinic, putting up 21 goals. They also were able to beat Northwestern's 12 man ride. They were able to handle the pressure of Northwestern's defense, which I thought was a bit out of control um, with 49 fouls and seven yellow cards. Um, that's something that I think really hurt them, putting Syracuse on the eight meter quite a bit. Um, Izzy Skane fought so incredibly hard to keep Northwestern in it. She brought them within three um, with seven or eight minutes left in the second half, but unfortunately it was a little too late. Um, they, uh, too, Northwestern lose a few people, but they keep Izzy Skein. They keep a good chunk of their offense and defense. Um, and they're, so, they're a team that's going to make another run in the Big Ten, another run for a national championship, and their coaches are going to be hungry as ever. So Syracuse won by eight goals um, and headed to the national championship for the third time under Gary Gate. And then we get to the national championship, BC versus Syracuse, a new uh, national champion would finally be crowned after BC went to three straight and lost. Syracuse has lost uh, the last two championships that they were in. So both programs, so re well respected, so well coached um, in the national championship again, where one would finally win. Um, from the opening whistle, BC just looked like the more dominant team. They were able to take control off the draw. Um, they were able to work the ball well. Charlotte North had a great game shooting, you know, very, very far out shots, very, very fast and putting them away. Um, she scored, I think, 101 goals um, this entire season, broke other records left and right, um, just had a great year all around, putting the ball in the back of the cage. Um, but everyone on their team stepped up and I thought their defense looked really, really strong. Um, and from, you know, the first half was pretty close, but that second half on BC dominated, ended up winning 16 to 10. Um, it was unfortunate for Syracuse. Emma Tyrell got out with two yellow cards with 11 minutes left in the first half. I think that took the wind out of their sails a little bit. She's been so key and integral, particularly in the second half, for their offensive and for their offensive firepower. And I think losing her was a big, big piece of the puzzle missing. So unfortunate for her, but she'll be back. Emily Harris Chuck is coming back from Syracuse. 
Um, Megan Carney will be back, I believe. So you're going to have a lot, a lot of talent coming back from the Syracuse squad who will be hungry for another national championship run. Um, and then congrats to BC and Acacia Walker and Sam Apuzo and Kayla Trainer for, for getting those national championships finally. I know how hard it is to lose a national championship as a coach and as, I mean, as a player and to lose them either as a coach or player and to finally get one has got to feel so good. So I'm so happy for Sam and Kayla and Acacia and the rest of the BC Eagles. What an amazing program. What an amazing run. Um, and what an amazing year of lacrosse. So I think moving forward, you know, the, the bar and the standard for women's lacrosse just continues to get go, grow higher and higher and get set higher. And I think we are just in such a great spot now where we're finally getting some, some publicity. We're finally getting eyes on our sport. Um, we have the players within the collegiate, international, and pro ranks to be able to, to create a lot of buzz. Um, and I think this year's, you know, this year's season really helped move us forward um, and continue to, to get people excited about the game. So thank you to all the players, all the coaches, all the staffs, all of the directors of ops and everyone who made this season possible for fans. Um, it was such a great year. It was so, we are so lucky to have watched you and learned from you guys. Um, and I'm already counting down the days to the 2022 season.